We are back on the road all this week in search of more secrets of the desert. Yeah, tonight we find News 3's Gerard Romalo surrounded by ghosts on the road <laughs> headed up toward Reno. Their first stop tonight, an abandoned mining town about 125 miles north of Las Vegas. Let's see if Gerard is still there. Yep, there he is. All right, we were a little worried when we saw you in the preview monitor, Gerard. You're out in Rhyolite, and that tiny town is, is getting popular all over again. Well, it certainly is, Jim, and not just because of its history, but because of its art. This is one of the more famous pieces out here in Rhyolite. You can see it does look like a bunch of ghosts standing side by side. You know, this town was actually booming back shortly after the turn of the century, and it was all because of what was hidden up in the mountains. This time, our journey takes us north along US 95. Las Vegans sometimes like to call it the road to Reno. Our first stop, an old ghost town turned tourist spot near Beatty, Nevada, named Rhyolite. Well, the miners used it extensively to cuss at. It was hard rock mining, and that was the stuff they were drilling and picking and blasting their way through. Do you know what <laughs> Rhyolite is? Uh, no. <laughs> Rhyolite is a mineral. Well, really, it's a rock. This here is Rhyolite. Here's some more Rhyolite. Pretty much that entire mountain is Rhyolite. Few people probably cared until an old prospector named Shorty Harris came through in 1905. He discovered gold hidden in the rock. He didn't really care about getting rich. To him, it was the search. Carl Olson is the current self-proclaimed mayor of Rhyolite. Population him. 1907, on their census, there was 8,000 people here. And they said it went all the way to 10,000 because of the mines in the surrounding area. By 1907, they had electric power, three railroads that ran through town. They had banks, brothels, bakeries, even churches and a school. Also, a home constructed entirely out of plaster and bottles. I don't think they ever drank water. I mean, there are whiskey bottles, wine bottles, champagne bottles, and that's what this is. There's, I forget how many different types of bottles are in here, including medicine bottles. Rhyolite heyday, however, would only last three years. After more than a million dollars worth of gold was recovered, eventually the mine dried up. The townsfolk and nearly everything else scampered. What do you think of it so far? Uh, it's amazing. By the mid 80s, though, something else happened in Rhyolite. Do you have this kind of art in Hong Kong? Uh, not very common. Artwork began to appear. The first was this piece called The Last Supper by an artist from Belgium. He started by soaking burlap in plaster of Paris, draping it over people, pouring more plaster over that, and then the board bounders had to hold still until it set. Once it was dry, he fiberglassed it. Half a dozen other works have been added since, including this one nicknamed The Lego Lady. But actually the artist, Hugo Hellman, said he was marrying the classical nude tradition with modern computer technology and she is supposed to be giant computer pixels. So the town was essentially abandoned right around 1910, but guess what, Jim and Jessica? In the late 80s, a big mining company by the name of Barrick Mining came out here and started mining the area again. They found more than a billion dollars worth of gold and silver all over again. Perhaps those early miners left a little bit too soon. We are back on the road tomorrow. We're headed up towards Goldfield, so we hope you'll join us once again. I'm Gerard Romalo reporting live from Rhyolite. Now back to you. All right, you and Grizzly Adams take it easy out there on the road. Uh, it's Chris Jones with a big beard out there. Tomorrow yeah. night they're going to join us from out in Goldfield where there's something called the Car Forest. But pretty cool. Yeah. Did you notice Chris was hiding in that sculpture? Yes. Mm -hmm. He likes to make a cameo. Yeah. All right, coming up.